My name is Kiara Young. I'm a part of the women's soccer program at Goldie Beacon College. I'm currently a senior pursuing a degree in psychology in hopes that one day I'll be a sports psychologist. And I'm going to be talking about the untold truth of being a student athlete. Student athletes internationally and across the country, different divisions in different conferences struggle to balance their ac academics, their athletics, and their social life. Today, I'm going to be sharing my story in hopes that I can show everybody what athletes across the world and across the US are struggling with. And hopefully I can be a voice to bring about change in breaking the social norms that student athletes have been um, held down with. The first thing I'd like to do is go over my schedule. Now mind you, Goldie Beacom Division II Women's Soccer Program. This isn't what every schedule looks like for student athletes. Division III is different, Division I is different, conferences are different, schools are different. But this is what my schedule looks like. I start my day when I have lifts at 5.30. Team lift usually lasts about one hour, so that's six to seven. I then go from 7.15 till about eight o'clock showering and getting my breakfast in. And then from eight to 11, I work from home. I'm fortunate enough to work with a company that allows me to do that while I'm in school. From then, I start my first class at 11.15 and that goes to about 12.45. And then from 12.45 to 1.15, I have 30 minutes to not only get in lunch, but get in a nap and to complete any schoolwork that I've missed from games or practices. There are some days that I can get all three and that's great, and other days, not so much. I then go to the athletic training room at 1.30 to get in my stretches and to work out any aches and pains from the previous game and practice. Then practice starts at 2 o'clock. From two to four, we're working on drills, watching film, and practicing for our out upcoming game. That takes me to about 4.15, I make it back to my dorm, I shower, and I complete any schoolwork or homework that I need to catch up with. My next class starts at 5.30, and depending on the professor, can last till about nine or 10 o'clock at night, which is when I have the time to make dinner if I didn't have time before my night class. And then I finish up some homework, I'm in bed by 11 or 12 o'clock. Like I said before, this is what my schedule is like, and it's hard to compare other athletes from different schools and divisions, but for this, it's busy for me. It's something that I struggle with, but I work hard every day to work with it. But now I'd like to reintroduce myself. Hi, my name is Kira Young. I'm a part of the women's soccer program at Goldie Beacom College. I'm a senior pursuing a degree in psychology, and I struggle with OCD and depression. Now the schedule that you saw before may not have seemed busy now, but now when I incorporate my OCD and depression, it's a lot harder for me. So what I'd like to do is talk about specific points in my schedule that are very difficult. And I would like to make a comment that it doesn't matter for any student athlete whether you have developed high levels of stress and anxiety or mental health issues prior to being a collegiate athlete during or after your collegiate career. What matters is how we are going to help each other and myself once we get to that position. So the first thing that's difficult for me is my 6 a.m. team lift. I wake up at 5.30 and I'm exhausted from the night before because I obsessed about not waking up. So every hour without setting an alarm, I was waking myself up. Once I get to team lift, it gets even worse from there. Every time, whether it's with my team or by myself, I have to complete an exercise, such as squats, right? Easy, you have three, three sets, 10 reps each. However, I have to always complete an extra rep or extra set. If that doesn't feel right to me, I do it again and again and again until my body feels as though, okay, I completed the form correctly, I did the exercise correctly, I'm gonna feel sore, I can move on. If I don't do that, I get this feeling of dread that something bad is gonna happen. And I don't always know what it is all the time. That moves into 8 a.m. to 11 a.m., which is when I work. So I am a student manager at a restaurant called Mulligan's Pub and Grill at, in College Park, Maryland. Quite far away from Wilmington, Delaware, but as I said before, I'm lucky enough to work from home. I make the schedule for all the student employees. So I use Excel 
and I go through all of the hours, all of the days throughout the week, whether it's wait staff, they're working in the turn on the golf shop, or we have a function for a wedding. But I sit there for those two hours, two to three hours, and I go through every employee, and I have to explain to myself more than five times why they deserve this shift, why they do not, why they have to take this shift, why they do not. This becomes time consuming, and most of the time, I don't get to finish this, and I have to send it off to one of my colleagues to finish. That moves on to 1.30. I'm at the athletic training room, I stretch. Every practice in every game, I have to do my stretches. If I don't, I can't, I can't play. I just have this bad feeling, I'll get injured, a teammate will get injured, I can't do it. So I complete my stretches. I have a set of them, they're all 20 seconds each. If I do not feel as though that stretch was done properly, I tack on another 10 seconds. If it doesn't feel right after that, I start the process all over again, which is why sometimes I'll go in a lot earlier than 1.30 to complete all of my stretches. That takes me to practice. This is another thing that's really difficult for me. There are days when my depression kicks in and I do not have any motivation to go. And I have to, have, I have to call my mom, my dad, boyfriend, friends, get my teammates to help motivate me so I can get there because I still struggle to do it by myself. So when I get there, my OCD also triggers. I'm sitting there constantly going through every activity and drill and film that we go through, every conversation that is made between teammates and myself and my coach and myself, and I am repeating it in my head multiple times and in different ways because I feel as though if I forget, I won't remember and I'll do poorly in a game. I'll, somebody will get hurt or we just will not have a good season. Now, they may seem like irrational thoughts, but they go through my head, and although I know that those are not true, it feels like it. So I do them until the feeling goes away. And for the last two, schoolwork and in the class taking notes, I no longer write with a pencil and paper. I have transitioned over to an iPad with an Apple pencil. Now, you would think typing would be easier, but I try to challenge myself, so I use an app, so that way I can write and it's easier to erase. But if I need to, I can type when on the fly. I no longer can write with pencil and paper because I have this idea in my head that my handwriting has to be perfect. And if that letter crosses that line, I have to start my notes all over again. Imagine writing 10 pages of notes and starting them over again in a class that you only have an hour to do or luckily a night class where you have four hours to do it. It's not fun and it is difficult and it is very hard for me to do it. So, iPad and pencil work. iPad and Apple pencil work for me. But there are days where it's still the struggle. Now what I'd like to do now is describe a little bit more what depression and OCD is like, and then go into detail on how it affects me every day. Now depression is a severe but common mood disorder. It affects how you feel, think, and handle daily activities such as sleeping, eating, and working. Now, there are different types of depressions, there are different intensities, and everybody is affected in different ways. For me, I am lucky that it doesn't affect me every single day of my life, and I'm fortunate enough to not have to struggle every day. But it is something that I still have to work on as I go throughout my college career, and hopefully, hopefully I don't have to, but I may have to do it afterwards, because this is something that is still fairly new to me as I was diagnosed this past spring in uh, 2019. Now OCD, OCD is an anxiety disorder, but it's broken up into two parts, obsessions and compulsions. Obsessions are intrusive and unwanted behaviors and thoughts that are only, um, that are only subsided through compulsions. And compulsions are ritual and repetitive actions that have to be completed in specific rules and patterns in order to subside the obsessions. For me, this is something that I struggle with every single day of my life. There are days where I am doing great and it only affects me here and there. And there are days when it is so bad that I feel as though I can't function and I can't do my daily activities. This is something I've struggled with since I was a kid, but I didn't know until I got to college because that's when it got really bad. But like I said before, everybody is different. My depression may be different from the teammate off to my right or the teammate off to my left. 
My OCD may be different from my sister or my classmate. Everybody is different in how it causes it, how they react to it, and what they do to solve it. My depression and OCD, it is hard some days, and some days it's easier. For me, as I said before, depression is not an everyday thing for me. There are some days where it's better than others, but OCD is quite difficult. I wasn't diagnosed with OCD till the fall, till my, the fall of my sophomore year. I didn't know, although I had struggled since I was a kid, but it didn't get back till I got to college and that's when I was diagnosed. And I had no idea how to help myself. I had no idea who to get in contact with, what to do, whether there's medications I need to take. So I struggled for two years by myself trying to fix this on my own with no progression. Then in the spring, of my junior year, I was diagnosed with depression after I hit a low. I struggled for a couple of months and realized I can't do all of this by myself. I am one person. I don't understand this. I don't have the resources. I need to get help. But the problem with that is that I'm an athlete. It's hard. A lot of times we have these social norms that we can't break because we're seen as weak and that we shouldn't be here. So what I'd like to do is show you an example on the board of what some of my OCD triggers are. So the, this is one of my notes I took on my iPad. Simple. Some of you may say, ah, it's a little sloppy handwriting, but there's nothing wrong with it. So we're going to get a little closer. You may say, oh, no, it's, it's fine. A little sloppy. I still don't see anything. These arrows all point to areas where it triggers my OCD. The fact that the N and the T in orientation does not touch the line, it triggers it. The T, the line isn't straight across, that triggers it. The O and the L are too far apart and the E doesn't finish its curve, it triggers it. This is just a small list of the hundreds of things in my writing that triggers it, and I don't know all of them. I just know that once I start feeling like something bad's gonna happen when I'm staring at my handwriting, I know I have to start my compulsions. Now, those are all different. Right now, it's a blinking sequence. I don't have a pattern, I don't have a set number, but I complete a certain amount of blinks in that time frame until that feeling of dread, until that feeling of something bad's gonna happen goes away and I feel satisfied. Now, as I said before, this is something that I've kept from my teammates, from my coaches, and I've struggled by myself, even from my parents and friends, because I thought that if people knew, they were gonna see me weak. I grew up being the tough kid. I was the only girl in a group of all guy friends. They always saw me as tough and that I could do anything. And when I went to college soccer, that title followed with me. But what I didn't know is that I couldn't do it by myself. I needed help. But because of the social norms, such as you chose this lifestyle, you're an athlete, you chose to have this schedule, you chose to deal with the stresses, you should be able to deal with it. You're fine. You're fine. What's going on, it's going to pass. You will get, get through it. There's no need to worry about it. The word tough. That one gets me a lot because a lot of people believe that since you do sports, you're tough. Nothing can go wrong, you can get through it. And you're not cut out for this. I felt as though once I told somebody, once I tried to get help, those were the words I was gonna get. And it, those were the words I did get from some people. Luckily, being here at Goldie Beacom College and having the resources that I did here, I didn't get that, but other places I did. And what I am here today is to show people that we need to break these social norms. We need to get past these words and sentences that bring athletes down and make them not want to seek help. Like I said, all conferences and divisions and student athletes and colleges are different and everybody deals with things in a different way. However, we need to stop with the social norms and we need to bring on more psychologists, sports psychologists to every university and college so that way athletes can feel as though they can get the help they need without bringing themselves down. Thank you.